I had this concept that if you're kind hearted, if you have a gentle spirit and a loving spirit, that you can go farther in life, that you can connect to people more deeply. It is so cold and rainy on April the 24th. Things aren't going, things are not going well. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm gonna get into a hive in just a second. Not today, it's one that I got into yesterday, even though it's only about 68 degrees, but I am gonna talk to you a little bit today about when things don't go well, how to somehow remain a little positive about it look at this even a bird pooped where i'm supposed to sit Ugh. and it's raining i can't keep the rain off of the golf cart but yep hang with me i'm gonna help you uh learn a few things inside a hive where i filmed yesterday and i'm gonna have a little coffee time with you today and talk to you about you know how to stay somewhat positive when things kind of go bad Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today for another bee inspection in the bee yard. Okay, so let's talk about the beehive. Um, let's let's talk about what we see here. I, I smoke the bees down a little bit and they have, this hive is made up of one, two, three, four supers. They overwintered in four supers. The only thing I fed the hive was uh, one or two winter bee kinds this winter. I did not feed them any liquid. Uh, sometimes I'll feed my bees liquid uh, in the spring, but I didn't do that. And so I doubt if they've built up tremendously yet. Uh, sometimes I make certain hives that I work build up faster because I need more bees. This isn't one of them. And uh, so we'll see how this one's coming along. Yeah, this hive has uh, got an old, old box on it. Oh my, this box is... It's just so old. It's misshapen, it's so old. It's warped and taken on a new shape of its own. And it's, look how much, well, these frames actually slip down below the frame hanger wall over here. And that's, that could potentially make problems down below, but th this box needs retired, this super here. So we'll have to, we'll have to kind of get this straightened out but for now we'll work it see what we can do all right so let's give it a good smoke again and i don't mind smoking and working the bees down as we go just so we can see more about what's up on top here and coming out of winter like this you can see there's a lot of propolis and it's not really that warm today but i think it's about 64 65 it's only supposed to get to about 66 or 67 today. And uh, I'm telling you right now, with even in the shade here, I'm, I'm rather cold. It's warm enough to look at bees. All right, look at that. That's, that's honey from last year. I can tell how saturated the wax is. Yeah. So we'll leave that uh, frame out for now. What we're looking for today is uh, seeing how the hive's doing as far as population of upcoming future bees. In other words, brood. So we need to see what kind of brood is in here. Now this super in the top here is probably gonna be all the way packed jam full of honey. Well, maybe not. Oh, there's a beetle. I didn't bring my beetle sucker. I don't like to accidentally kill a bee when I'm trying to kill beetles either. Okay. I got that beetle. This turned out to be not the best place to put a hive. I've got about 20 hives around me here in this yard, but it's too much shade. I do see some brood. Let's take a look and see what we got. Looks like some drone brood maybe. Uh, these frames don't line up at the bottom correctly. And so when there's a gap, they'll put some brood in there. I'll tell you what I mean by don't line up correctly in just a second. See the drone brood? Male bees. Oh, drone brood with some honey on top. Here's a good image of a frame that you should be able to recognize with three things on it. Number one, we have honey at the top. Number two, we have a little bit of nectar where the honey stops. 
and number three we have drone brood and number four I just saw it we do have some pollen some orange yellowish pollen so that gives everybody a pretty good idea of what you're looking at on a frame like this uh, the reason why you see drone brood at the bottom below the frame and I'll give you an example right here if you see this frame right here so let's pretend this is uh, <coughs> the box below a box up here and let's say this frame here is in the box above it <laughs> it's got larvae that's falling out so if your frames line up in the box above it to the box below it like this it's unlikely they'll build any uh, drone brood in between the frames but if this frame actually drops between the frames then there's a gap that's created and so they will build drone uh, in those gaps like that all right let's keep working our way across smoke again um, in my live stream I encouraged everyone to smoke your bees about every couple of frames when you're working them the smoke does wear off in other words, the bees may not be as um, affected by the smoke after a little bit. So uh, you don't want to wait too long before you give them another puff of smoke. Yep. All right, let's see what's going on here. All right, another frame. Now, this is a similar frame with honey at the top. A little bit of nectar below where the honey is. And then we have pollen below that. And we don't see any brood yet. As soon as I see brood, I will let you know what it looks like. Now, sometimes we are able to see areas like this where the queen uh, can lay. Um, I've always felt like when I see this, that the bees have prepared a place for the queen to lay. It seems to be dried out or polished. Yep, yep, that's definitely got some larvae in it. So we have. Uh, young brood eggs and larvae way down at the bottom. I know it's hard to see on camera Camera is not a friend of trying to get good video of eggs and larvae. I know that and I am just getting torn up by the wind Okay, now we're getting into again. This is our top uh, super brood box actually look at that so here we do have a frame of solid brood. This is a queen that I thought didn't look good, wasn't laying well, and uh, she's done really well now for two years. She's got two years of good laying pattern under her belt. So let's talk about this frame. This would be a good one. Um, capped over uh, brood in the middle. It's darker and more velvety looking is what I call it. Looks more like a cloth finish where if you look at the other corner up here, see the difference between the two? This is more waxy looking. That's honey below there. So you got honey, capped over honey. Anything that's not capped over and glistening as nectar is not dried out enough yet. And then over here uh, toward the bottom is brood, developing uh, bees in the pupae stage. And then we have some drone brood at the bottom we have a queen cup there with nothing in it. This is great to help new beginners get really familiar with bees and what bees look like in the development stage. And uh, also what honey pollen looks like when you're doing a bee inspection. If you're enjoying this inspection, please subscribe. We're up to 140 thousand subscribers almost 141,000. thanks for subscribing appreciate it click on the bell give me a thumbs up you'll be notified each time i make a new video to help you guys out i'm working hard for you please subscribe now let's get back in this hive okay i almost thought i saw the queen but it was just a bee with a lot of yellow pollen on her leg same sort of frame here we have brood honey Nectar, drone, drone brood. There's a big drone at the bottom walking around. There's a bee with a lot of yellow pollen on her hind leg. Um, don't really see the queen initially. I'm looking quickly, but don't see her. Let's look over here. Same sort of frame. Now, it's not unusual to see this kind of what you might call spotty brood. 
uh, coming out of winter like I'm doing here, um, we, we probably see some a lot more brood as we get further down. This is the very top box. Out of four supers, this is a, the top super. So there's, oh boy, that's going to be tough to get this out of here. A lot of propolis. And uh, this, this day is colder than most. And that means that the propolis is much harder when it gets cold. So the propolis is what you see that kind of sticks all the frames together. Bees collect that from plants and trees. And all the ones we have to wrestle with it. All right, let's take a look here, see what we have. Same sort of thing here. We have pollen, drone, honey at the top. Not seeing the queen, although I do see some eggs that have been laid. So she's been around here recently. Yeah, same thing. A lot of pollen and bee bread. Um, mostly pollen. There is some bee bread. It's a little more wet looking. Glistening with some enzymes. Bee saliva on there. Fermenting. All right. We're pretty much done looking at this honey super here because the rest of these frames over here are honey frames. Yeah, I finally had to close that hive up. It was 25 mile an hour winds constantly out of the south, and it was literally blowing bees off of the frame. I could I could just watch bees just get knocked off. And it was barely warm enough, 65 degrees Fahrenheit, to even do an inspection. And I just didn't want to damage any of the capped over pupae. But, uh, so I just had to... I saw enough, and that was it. But I don't know if I got to tell you guys a lot about that hive, and then I'm gonna have a coffee time. I'm gonna talk about how to be more positive about negative things that happen. It's gonna be really good for you. But that hive I used to have back here, I think three years ago. And one time I noticed the queen had spotty brood and I put her, she was in a top super at the time, and I took that super off with the queen in it and made its own little hive. I didn't want to kill the queen. You ever had a moment where you think, I, I, I need to replace the queen, but I just hate to kill her. And so I put her back here in a, on a bottom board with the top cover on a, on a medium sized super that she was in off another hive. Then I just put a new queen in that hive that I took her out of. I just wanted to see what she would do. And going into fall, Things didn't look too good, but then I noticed she was doing okay uh, on a warm day in the winter. And I thought, well, that's a little unusual. Maybe they're robbing her out. Maybe that hive is dead and they're just robbing that hive. But when I went to do an inspection inside of it, there she was. And the brood looked awful good. And she made it through winter in a, in a just one single medium super in Illinois. You know, we always feel like we got to have two deeps. Uh, 70 pounds of honey but she made it through the winter so last year after she made it through the winter I just started giving her more medium supers on top and then uh, so she did had a good year and now that was that that was the last video we just saw this is a few minutes ago we just actually opened it up I'm getting rained on and um, so she looked looked good but Boy, I tell you what, this year I got to replace that queen. I can't go any longer with her. Um, it's just too risky because she's got too much, too many years on her. And um, she's been a good queen, although I misjudged her that one time. But it'd be good to replace her. So if you look around me today, miserable day. This is the day. In fact, look at this forecast. You can see my forecast today, tomorrow, the next day. It's going to get down to 38 degrees. We're back to, you know, uh, almost freezing temperatures again. And I haven't, because of the temperature, the wind and rains and all, I haven't been able to keep up with all my hives to do swarm control, which I want to do. And it is going to start warming up this weekend. And so if the weather was good today, I'd do, I'd do all my inspections, swarm controls. But now, now this is going to be the story of my life for the next few days cold and rainy that can make somebody kind of blue and depressed do you get down sometimes do you really get let things like this bug you you know what um we all do and i want to tell you guys if you don't know a lot of you probably don't know a lot about my personal life but 
I have not always uh, been, um, I've always had a very positive outlook on life, but life for me has not been a bed of roses. I've had my share of very challenging life experiences um, like most of us have. I was kind of teasing at the opening of this video, you know, having to wipe off a golf cart seat and clean off bird poop on a rainy day is not a bad day. But those kind of things can set people off in the wrong mood and you're like, oh, now I had that and then I had this happen, I dropped that and I broke this and all at once, ah, I hate this day, you know. Well, I want to tell you, I want to give you some pointers to help you and because I've gone through some scary, scary stuff. I've, and I've told you before, I've, I, my other job had a lot of uh, stress to it and a lot of drama, a lot of hardships. And I was poor, very poor, most of my early marriage and child rearing years. And so I kind of know what it's like to live in fear of not having enough money, bill collectors, um, illness, sickness, kids being sick. Uh, both my parents have died. I had to bury both my parents um, and I love them dearly. That was just so heartbreaking. And um, my one of my brothers was killed in a car wreck by a drunk driver. I could go on. You don't need to hear my story, but um, I've, I've gone through some stuff. And I know you have too. You're going through stuff now. We all will. I'm 64, so I've got a lot more bad stuff in front of me. Ooh, I hate to say that, but it's inevitable. Life is just made up of ups and downs, and there's going to be ups and down moments. And so the way that I get through these things is I want to, I want to tell you, because this might be helpful. It helped me in my beekeeping, early years of beekeeping too. Ready? It's sheer grit it is it's sheer grit i learned about being a person of sheer grit in my past career the only way i could get through some of the things that i went through was sheer grit grinding your teeth together sucking it up and a phrase that i use a lot is to cowboy up and just get her done and that's pretty tough sometimes depending on what you're going through and uh, I know some of you might be uh, people that have to work outdoors on a day like today. You know, you drive down the highway, you see people holding a flag or doing road work on a rainy, cold day like this. Man, that's sheer grip. And I've had a few times when I've had other jobs um, that I had to do hard work like that. Um, and grit really is helpful. Now, the thing about sheer grit, the, one of the things that I used to do when I had to face um, very difficult challenges in life was that I would focus on the moment and say, okay, this is a bad moment. This is horrifying. It's, it's just terrible. But I just focused on the present moment. Like right now, I can breathe. I'm alive. I'm not dead. And I can get through this present moment and then I just thought okay there there's going to be tomorrow and there's going to be another day and there are times now when even I'm with people and we're on special projects that are challenging that I'll say to them look this is only going to be bad for the next 31 minutes or the next one hour after that it's over okay <laughs> and so you just got to take those kind of approaches to when you're going through bad things you know I'll take a deep breath and say, it's going to be okay. I'm going to get through this. Now, you're going to get through it. And I know some of you are saying, David, you, know, you don't know what I'm going through. I'm not getting through this. This is going to all end bad. But you will, you will get through it. I have a lot of cliches that I can say. You know, you can always say things like, well, you can look around and there's somebody else going through something else that's worse or, um, uh, you know, that... It, it's bound to get better. You can say all those things. It doesn't make what you're going through any better. So I just want to come alongside of you and say, I don't understand. I can't understand and relate to your feelings that you're going through. I, I confess that what you're going through is different 
even if it's the same thing that I went through, it's different. We have different feelings and a different outlook. I am a positive person, but I'm a positive person that I can have my very, very down moments. Yeah. And I can have moments where I, like today, I really felt like, man, I would love to go back inside and take a nap. You know, it's like one in the afternoon for me right now, one thirty. And I thought, it's not going to get any better. I mean, there's no break in the clouds. I can't work bees. And, you know, making a video is going to take time editing and filming. But I wanted to speak to my family, my beak squad. I call you beak squad because beak, beekeeper, and my squad, you guys are my family that watch my videos. And I appreciate you so much. A lot of you have families young children that watch this and i like to i like to sometimes speak like this even so that your your kids can listen to me and learn i think that's important too i know a lot of times someone my age today um uh, you know a lot of people look at someone my i'm 64 i i know i'm kind of falling to the age group of being called a baby boomer but my life as a baby boomer wasn't the typical life of other baby boomers. I'm I'm kind of a I think I'm an elder Gen X if I if I got my math right, but I didn't have an an easy life as a baby boomer when when Sherry and I got married. It was hard work. Everything that I learned about existing in life was survival. How do I survive? And it was about how do I get through the next major conflict or the next next issue? Um, it was all about that. So I lived a big part of my life struggling. And the struggles that we go through, they really have bad things that we learn from them and it's hard to shake. But they also have some really good stuff that we learn in time of struggles. Like I was telling, there were some people that were doing some repairs. We had a couple of spots on our roofs that were leaking and um, we had them come and chase down the leak and fix that and I, I was telling them you know we were talking they were about my age and we were sharing together how you know when we were younger we we didn't have a lot of money and trying to raise a family and all you had to do your own work you had to do your own stuff to get things fixed and keep things going and I, I told them that I didn't get to where I am today, which is not very far, don't get me wrong, um, but I didn't, get, I didn't get out of living from paycheck to paycheck very easily. That took a lot of hard work. Uh, I haven't inherited uh, a lot of money from a rich uncle, for example, that's not me. I don't have a rich uncle that I know of. And if I did, I don't think I'm in the will. <laughs> so everything that I've decided that I needed in life to exist I physically had to use my hands and work. My dad taught me how to work and work hard. And, you know, that's just, that was the way I raised. Now, I said there were some bad things associated with that, with struggling all your life. And that's one thing that I want to encourage you guys with, because if you live in constant struggle, it's hard not to always feel like you're in a constant struggle, even when you're not. In beekeeping, Right now, I can feel like I'm in a constant struggle because I made a mistake. I moved my, uh, I have 20 hives here that I use to film in. They used to be pretty much behind me and off to the, over there behind this building. And so I could walk out and film and it didn't take long. Now they're all the way down there and I put them in under shaded trees, small high beetle battle. And I don't, um, I'm not able to go down there as easily. That's why oftentimes I film back here because it's just, out the door boom you're in a hive so now i've got the challenge of trying to move all those hives back down not here they won't let me put them here because of this is where ups picks up deliveries or shipments but they want me to put them behind this building you see back here behind that one or behind the other one and i was going to do that this this next couple of days before the bees get too big but i can't do that now so that's a struggle but what it is, it's not really a bad struggle. Um, you know, I thought the process through. I thought having the bees down there would be a good thing. But no, nah, I don't like them down there anymore. So it just didn't work out. 
and I'm going to say, okay, didn't work out. Not going to have any regrets about it. What's my next course of action? And so sometimes when we go through struggles, it's hard for us to break free of feeling like we're always in a struggle. So if you're out of a big struggle, like maybe you have enough money to pay your bills. Maybe you don't have major uh, health concerns. Maybe you don't have major relationship issues that are you know, making you sick about it. But you have gone through enough that those struggles have left some PTSD or some after struggles. That's the time to kind of say, wait a minute, I'm okay. And even if you are going through a bunch of stuff, it's still okay to say, you know what? I'm okay. You know, I'm out in the rain now, but I got a roof over my head. It's not much of a roof, but that's by choice. I wanted to film out in the rain and make it um, obvious that what kind of a day this is, what I'd rather be doing. But then I thought, you know what? There's nothing more I'd rather be doing than making a video and encouraging guys. I've got a lot of uh, subscribers that love me, and I've got a lot of viewers who don't like me. Now, I wouldn't say a lot. I don't know. I see some comments every now and again, and people act like they don't like me. They think something I said was stupid, or I'm an idiot. And you see those things. You know, I, I read recently where it takes five positive comments just to cover up one negative comment in our thinking. And I thought it was higher than that because I can read a thousand comments on YouTube that say, thanks for that video. And I, I appreciate all those positive, encouraging words. But if I get one comment where a guy just or someone goes off on me um, unjustifiably, I'll take it if it's me. I'll suck it up and say, yeah, I blew that. My bad. But if it's just, you know, just somebody just going out of their way to make my life miserable in a comment, um, be honest with you, I delete it. I'm just not going to let that comment be there. I don't think anybody needs to hear that or see that. Um, if that's how you feel, um, it's, the YouTube comment section is uh, my yard. It's my property. And you just can't show up on my property and belittle me, all right? <laughs> if you got some good, honest words and I deserve it, I'll leave it up there. But I'm deleting the stuff where you just call me a beep and a beep and you're a beep and beep. Delete. And YouTube deletes those anyway, even before I see them. Uh, most of them, if they have that kind of language or links in them and all that. My point is that uh, we're all subject to wanting to feel good. We're wanting to be a part of a, we want to find our people. We want to find someone we can relate to and, and sit down on a rainy day and talk to and, and just hear somebody speak some type of truth over our lives. You know, it's important. And no matter where you get in life, no matter how rich or famous or struggling and poor, unknown that you are, we all need our people. We all need a place where we can relate to people. And as much as some people don't like this, and I get it, YouTube has been and has become a place where people find their people. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's where I have found my people. You're my friends, and you relate to me, and I relate to you, and I help you with beekeeping and other things like life like this. And there's a connection that's kind of, oh, it's therapeutic and enjoyable. And I think it's cool that YouTube can be a place where we can just um, find a, a place like this. By the way, I think the live stream is just unbelievable. My live stream on Thursday night, and I don't mean unbelievable in that I think it's a you know great live stream because I'm a, a, I'm a great live streamer. I don't think that's what I'm saying. I'm saying it's great because I get to connect with you. And when I connect with you, it's so great. Oh, my gosh. I love connecting with all of you. And Thursday night at 7 on my live stream, it's just a place where we can just say hi to each other. We can connect. And it's been great. It really has been. So I, I love the live stream to help our Beak Squad have conversation, community together. Um, it's really good. So back to the whole concept, and I'll land the plane with this. Um, this, this idea of being positive and negative. Look, um, 
we're going to have negative things happen to us. Uh, we all we all will. We all have. We will yet to come. And the only thing we can do is sheer grit. It really is. Own up to it. Say this is this is grit right now. It's grit time. I got to move those bees down here, or um, I'm going. Someone might say I'm going through a divorce. That's going to be grit. It's going to take some grit. Somebody might say I just went through a car wreck and I'm injured. I'm recovering. It's going to take a long time and. Or, you know, I'm just struggling at my work, someone might say. And I thought I would get that promotion, but I didn't. And now I got to keep working this job, this part of the job that I hate for another year and a half before I can ever think of that promotion again. And other people might say, financially, it's hard. I can't find a way to pay all my bills. Groceries are so expensive. Gas and insurance. Wow. It's, um, I can relate to all of that, you know. Um, so I just want you to realize that grit can help you get through that. But having a peace of mind where you can live in the present moment and you can say to yourself, this isn't going to last forever. I'm finding a way right now to be positive. I'm going to have to find a way to find something humorous about this, something that I can say one day I'll be able to look back and say, man, that was hard. But I, I made it through it because of sheer grit. And uh, beekeeping is going to teach you that, by the way. Um, no matter what you do right in beekeeping, there are going to be times that uh, it's going to go bad on you. I mean, a hive's going to die. You know, when a hive dies, it's not as bad as when a hive is really weak and dying. Because then you you feel like, oh, i got to save it. What do I do? What are the next steps? I don't think i got a chance. How do I... Is it mites? Is it disease? How do I get rid of all that? I mean, if they die, you're just like, oh, oh, you know, you grieve and they're dead and you move on. But you might struggle with a failing hive for months and months and then they die. And then you feel like an idiot because you felt like you didn't do enough. You know, have you ever had that? Life's the same way. You go through struggles and you think, oh, I got to keep, I got to have grit and get through this and somehow make this all not a problem anymore. And you pour your soul into it and it doesn't help it. Turns out bad anyway. So worrying about it and staying in a bad mood about it, um, it's just going to make things worse. Um, I'm talking to myself. I know, I know I'm not trying, to, not trying to tell you what you're doing wrong. I'm just trying to say for me, I've got to stop sometimes all the negative stuff in my head. And I got to say, I'm thankful and grateful that I got 20 hives that I use for my YouTube studio here. They're down there and I need to move them down here. It's going to be so much work. But I got 20 hives that I can move. That's something to be thankful and grateful for. I'm thankful that the 50 plus hives that we take nukes out of are doing great. And I've got a fellow that uh, basically handles that for me now and that I should be thankful for that. He's having to, to deal with the rain. <laughs> Packages, the same way, you know? So. Oh, you, you got to find a way to not just focus on the negative, but focus on the positive. So I hope my encouragement and coffee time today has helped you not feel overwhelmed with life. Take a deep breath and, and know that I'm your friend. I'm here for you. I like chatting with you. I want you to hear my voice of encouragement. I hope you hear out of my vocal cords, encouragement, love and kindness i have this concept and leave a comment this would be interesting and see how many of you made it this far leave a comment below because i have this idea i have this concept that if you're kind-hearted if you have a gentle spirit and a loving spirit that you can go farther in life that you can connect to people more deeply leave a comment if you think that's true because I know a lot of people are more, I don't know, a little rougher, mean. They, they want to get ahead in life by clawing their way up there, stepping over people, putting people down to get ahead. But my approach has always been, and it still is, to have a gentle spirit, a kind heart, have kindness, and be very compassionate toward other people. and that's who I am. And if I ever have an opportunity to express that, it's like in my videos that I make. And I, well, I think you see that 
hopefully in the video. So that's why I like connecting with you, that you can see that in me and just feel the warmth of my heart, hopefully encouraging you, warming up your heart to be positive and get through whatever you're going through. Now, if you want to watch a new video that I just made recently um, in this hive back here. Oh, uh, no, it was this hive over here. Yeah, it was this hive. It'd be a good one for you to watch and kind of study what's going on. Give you some ideas about kind of inspecting a hive. Take a look right over here. I'll see you in that video.